Welcome. Um, it's been a while since my last video. Uh, so today is kind of a reboot. Um, I decided to start with um, a thing which is um, about programming itself. So um, back to the good old .NET world. Um, so <clears throat> today I'm going to talk uh, to you about NuGet Central Packet Management. I think it's an interesting thing. Uh, I will start with a demo to illustrate what it's all about. Um, the old ways, the new ways, old ways. It's from April this year, uh, central package man and um, man management, at least the announcement. And then um, yesterday, I decided to write a little tool to make it easier to step into um, central package management. You can download it from GitHub or from um, the .NET tool installer. Uh, I will showcase this later and without further ado, um, let's start. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm sharing my screen and um, uh, I just want to start by talking about what is uh, central package man management doing uh, in terms of NuGet and uh, for us to understand this maybe uh, it's the best way to look at the old way or the current way without central package management. So <clears throat> I have um, a project here which is uh, from my company uh, and it's called Neelix because we name it after Star Wars. And we can go here <clears throat> and uh, take a look at uh, some source code. This is kind of a typical solution here in the source folder. You have solution stuff, um, then uh, the solution file, then you have uh, solution folders containing some projects like the common project here. Let's uh, watch it. And now, as you might know, <clears throat> NuGet um, comes into place in the CS project file. In the item group here, for instance, it's referencing this Deftia um, NuGet package in this version. Um, thank you. And um, now you have another um, library here um, and another CS project. And then again, you have package references. And the main part here is you have explicit versions inside of the CS project files, which is totally okay. But when it comes to NuGet updates or updating packages or um, most common if you add a new project uh, you might end up having newer versions inside of this project of certain packages than you have in other project um, in other projects so there were solutions for this um, the consolidation in um, Visual Studio was one of the solutions and <clears throat> now NuGet central package man management comes in and it might solve this in a better way so in order to um, explain you this, I have created a little bit, um, a little sample, which is, uh, I'm not, I've, I've not created it, to be honest, uh, CPM sample. Uh, all I did is, I think here's another CPM test here. So what I have here is I just created an empty solution, which is um, this one here in Visual Studio. And um, I want to uh, start by creating a new project. Okay, let's add a new project. Uh, maybe, as always, my solution folder, and then I'm doing this new project. And inside of this, let's do a console app in um, .NET, and then let's call it uh, first console, whatever, in CPM test. Um, let's create a new folder here, UI inside of this folder so that folders are matching and let's do dotnet 6 i think it's totally okay create okay um that's it uh, now i have a console project and now the most um, normal way for me uh, would be to add nuget packages let's say uh, azure storage would be a typical one um, where is Azure Storage, Blob, Azure Storage, I don't know. It's always the same, Azure Storage. Uh, why is Qs at the top? <laughs> um, Azure Storage, Blob. It's not that, mm, there it was. Uh, Azure, Azure Storage, Blobs there at the top. Install this and now if I accept the agreement, now what you got is let me click on the first console now this let me 
Now we have this package reference here with the explicit version. Okay, the old way. How now comes NuGet package, uh, central package management into place? I have prepared a little bit, you know, on my other screen so that I can uh, swipe it over. So the thing starts by creating a file, which is, let's do it this way, um, because it's all about the file name first. And the file name needs to be, um, let me sneak directory, like in the uh, target files, uh, the, the same name pattern, the build target files. Then you have packages and then props, I think. Yeah, props. So we need this file. Now we created this file. And from this point on, I could go here and add this file to my solution so that I have it here in my solution file. Add an existing item and let's add this file because it's, first of all, a simple um, XML file, to be honest. So in the CS project or in the build format. So what you need to add here is, let me pick it out. So it's, this starts uh, with a tag called project which is the same um, as it is uh, in, by the way, in CS project here. When you go here, it starts with project. You can omit SDK here. It's totally okay. So you have project and now it's kind of the same stuff. Uh, you have property groups and item groups. Uh, let me sneak here. So we start with a property group and this is the most important thing, which is this one. So. This property group introduces one property and there are more properties, by the way, but I'm not going into detail uh, here, which is called manage package version centrally to true, which kind of for every project beneath this file. So recursively in every folder beneath this file, if any CS project finds this file above it, it will respect this file. And now what you essentially do is you go to your, uh, or first of all, you create the item group section. Um, it's not, it's not closing it. Uh, can I? Thank you. So let's do this. And now you basically would go here, take this package reference, go over, paste it in with the version. And what's important, it's now called package version instead of package reference. So that's all you need. Now that you have this in place, you can go here to your first console and remove the version. And that's basically it. Okay, let's see if this still works, kind of. Um, uh, it's not. Um, program does not, oh yeah, main method. Here you go. Why not? Console write line, write hello, whatever. Um, and this, maybe I should apply my default window layout so you can see my output here. Uh, rebuild, and I'm not sure, succeeded, fine. And now it would be maybe good to, um, see if this actually does something. So what do we have? Uh, var um, client equals new um, blob. What was it? Blob um, base client, blob client. Okay, blob client URI is HTTPS something.com. Uh, new UI, sorry, I'm just, just want to use something out of the package so that we can ensure that uh, this thing actually uh, does something. Okay, rebuild succeeded. Let's execute this and hello is uh, spit out and that's it basically. So now we know this, this happens. So although we don't have a version specified here. It takes the version from this uh, packages props file here and it will be the 1214.1. With that, let's take a look into manage NuGet packages in Visual Studio into installed. So what he shows here is that we have 1214.1 installed. That's nice, but that's the easy part, okay? 
So first of all, what happens when we add another package? So let's go and add entity framework. Entity framework core. I don't know why is it scrolling uh, a little bit down all the time. Anyways, let's do it. So from now on, Visual Studio, uh, or to be um, precise, the tooling detects that we are using CPM, Central Package Management, and he will use this package uh, reference here in this file uh, without the version and automatically will populate the version we choose here. So from this point on, it should be obvious what happens if we create a second project. So let's do it. Let's create a second project, new project, second console, of course. Let's go next, second console, which is then also in the UI folder, let's say, next, uh, .NET 6 again. Okay, here it is. And now without setting up anything, because currently there's no NuGet package, let me uh, make this a little bit, okay. Let's add a NuGet package, which will be, first of all, another one. Um, let's say Spectre Console, which is a cool package, uh, but it's not installed, of course. Uh, Spectre Console, if you don't know what it is, just Google it, it's nice. So now, from here on, we just have automatically in this new project, he also respects our setting that the versioning uh, is happening in the central package management file, which is here. So we have the console here, nice. So, but then when we now add a dependency uh, to uh, another package, let's say entity framework core, <clears throat> um, and install this and accept it, uh, it's now, of course, referencing this entity framework core package, which is um, referenced by the other one too. So updating those packages if we go to manage nuget packages for solution and we go to entity framework core we could now go to any further version 6 or 12 um, theoretically is it possible uh, can i go to 6 or 12 okay let's try it out just go here 6.0.12 what's going on is this working rebuild Succeeded and NuGet packages. What's going on? Can you refresh? Yeah, we have 6012 6 installed now. I don't know why he's uh, not providing me any button here. He's not downgrading it for any reason. Latest stable. Hmm. I think my UI is stuck. Visual Studio at its best. But anyway, um, now you can see that this is a far more elegant way to keep track of which versions are installed of which package if you stick to the plan with this file. <clears throat> okay, cool. So far so good. Um, so I've detected that and then I, I've looked in my packages. Let's open this Neelik project here, which I showed you earlier, uh, repos, uh, dev deer, Neelik's, and then let's open this, this guy. It will take some time. So now my problem was, I was thinking about, well, um, should when I'm doing or have to do this for all those projects here, which have those packages here in place, it's kind of, mm, it sucks, okay? I didn't want it um, to be that, um, uh, that uh, a, bun a lot of work uh, just to update and normal or current. Oh, that's uh, my Siri. It's kind of getting nervous. So uh, I just wanted to come up with a tool. And the most natural way uh, to do this, I think, is with .NET uh, Global Tools. So let me show you if I go to .NET Tool List uh, G here. Um, I am um, already have this in place in version 003 alpha. It's a early version, it's from tonight, it's, so it's, it's baked. .NET tool, uh, let me uninstall this uh, so that you can see 
the whole process. Let's go to my GitHub page. So uh, it's my DevDeer GitHub page. I, I did it not under Coding Freaks this time. I did it under my company, um, but it's still a public um, repo. So you totally can um, look at the source code and it's not that complicated, a lot of regex stuff and so on. Just did a little bit of work and I already pushed it to NuGet. So as it mentions here, this is the line you have to do. Currently you have to add dash dash pre-release for obvious reasons, because it's still in alpha. I'm working on it. Um, so I'm installing the tool. So there it is in German. So again, .NET um, tool list dash G. And what you see here is that you can call the tool with the command to CPM. So that's all you have to implement. If you write now uh, to CPM, to the console, it spits out uh, this nice output. By the way, this all was not done by me. This is all, um, you can look it up in my source code. This is all done by Spectre Console. Shout out to you guys. Nice one. Um, I think I also will um, add a, um, <clears throat> um, a mention somewhere in my source code. It's, it's a really nice library. I like it. So, and what it tells you is, uh, you can go here and execute the two CPM in two modes, in simulate mode and in execute mode. Um, the simulate mode will not change any file. It's just doing what it's uh, saying here. It's simulating the process and spitting out what the result would be. And then the execute mode does the real thing. Okay, so what you really need is if I um, uh, go to to CPM simulate and then I'm just adding a folder which is uh, let's go the repos and this is uh, dev deer neelix and then in the source folder so the folder you select here should be the folder which contains the solution file so the topmost folder which makes sense this folder would work too but it makes no sense to execute the tool later in this because this is a folder where in the execute level it will create this global um, uh, prop file so let's go to source and let's go and run the simulation so what this does is it's running okay it's finding so and so many files. So there are 13 files. Let me double check. It's 13 projects. So that's not so bad. That counted correctly. So currently I only support CS project and no VB files or whatever, because I don't care currently. I, I Maybe I will do it. Let's see, but I'm a C sharp guy. So I found 13 files and I found 32 unique packages inside of this file. So what I'm doing here I'm just spitting out in a nice table, Spectre console. I'm spitting out all the packages I found in the version I found. And what I'm doing too, I'm only taking the newest version I found. So if I find two versions of the same package, I always take the newer version here um, into account. So, and then this uh, part here uh, is if I would, uh, run this in execute mode um, it would create this file um, and this is as you can see package version so this is already the correct file uh, for the um, global and it would create it and it also by the way would um, do the replacement inside of the C's project file hopefully hopefully so if I'm going to execute right now um, and I'm doing help, there are two options which are important in the execute verb. So the first one is force, which would lead um, to not asking you if you really want to do it. So this is di um, kind of sk skipping the confirmation, mm, which is useful for scripts, but just anyway. Backup is a nice one because it will create uh, backups of the C's project files in the folders it finds it um, with the back ending. So let's go and do the execute instead of the simulate to watch it. So now the same output, he finds the same packages and you confirm it with yes, I will do it. 
and he did it, but without backup. So let's take a look here if this is true. You see changes in my Git. Every package has now a package reference without a version here. He removed it and he added, it's not visible. Let me look into the folder. Mm. Mm. Ah. It's the source folder. And let's look here and he created this file for me. So this tool does this in one step. Uh, if I wanted to, um, let me undo it. Um, and now let's do git clean, what was it, dash f. Uh, let's do the status. Okay, now I'm back. Okay, here you can see I'm back and he has the versions again. So let's rerun the tool with the backup option maybe. Where is it? So this time I could run it with the point. I hope so. <laughs> and uh, dash B for backup. He's running, yes, in the same output and yes, do it. Okay. Um, so what now is, what you can see now is that he added the back files here um, on the side of the C's project files, which he changed. Okay, so now you have additional files, which is this here. This is the back, this is the old one. And you can totally um, do a dry run, if you will, or several stages. So first you get simulation by this is a dry run. And then the next one is with backup to see if everything works and you can build. Let's see if I can build first. Let's see if this works. I'm not even sure. It, it works. It's still building, although everything was so it's 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 a really cool and nice tool. Very lightweight. I think I will be out of um, 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 out of alpha pretty soon. I'm. I wanted. I want to test this on Mac first, uh, um, a little bit thoroughly because ZSH is making trouble with the command for documentation stuff. Mm. But other than that, it's working pretty nicely and it's not complicated. Yes. Uh, so mm, I had to re-record this ending a little bit because my uh, mic was off. But anyway. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, it's not complicated. Um, I think uh, the tool makes it pretty easy to switch to central package management. I hope you like it. If you like it, um, go ahead if you want and star uh, the repo on GitHub maybe, um, or just use it. Give me feedback, um, maybe uh, raise some issues if you find some. And um, yeah, contact me if you like. Um, see you next time.